Hello and welcome to episode 345 of the official EstablishTheRun.com podcast. My name is Adam Levitan. I am one of the co-founders here at ETR and we are coming off of a Steph Diggs strikes kind of week. Yes, that's right. On Valentine's Day, Stefan Diggs allegedly pulled quite a move. I, you know, your humble narrator, of course, have zero experience dating multiple women at the same time. But this Steph Diggs incident does raise an interesting point. If you are dating two women or more, I guess, at once without their knowledge, how do you handle Valentine's Day, right? I mean, the way that Diggs handled it seems bad. I mean, you know, what the fuck do I know? But, but putting them up at the same hotel in the same city and trying to go back and forth between rooms... I, I don't know. I just don't see how you can have a positive POE pumps over expectation in that spot. You know, yes, your sex frequency model, your sex frequency rating, SFM, is through the roof. But that's such an overrated metric in this context. You know, uh, of course, it makes me think of Lou Williams. I mean, Lou Williams would laugh at this dilemma. Lou Williams, the 15-year NBA veteran and unquestioned, you know, no doubt on the board, of team sex, Lou Williams is famous for having multiple girlfriends at once. But this is not secret. This is not shrouded in darkness. They all know. You know, they all hang. It's all on the up and up. Now, now that is some alpha shit right there, you know? Uh, some big love shit, you know, except without the drama. You know, Lou Williams' girlfriends, multiple, sit together at the games. They go out together. You know, Valentine's Day comes, and it's just another day in the life. And so that's why this move that Steph Diggs pulled, you know, it doesn't get him on the board of Team Sex. It's, it's amateur hour in a lot of ways, if you ask me. I will say this, though, man. I'm genuinely concerned about how many people sent me this Stefan Diggs story. I mean, when this Diggs story broke, my phone was absolutely blowing up. You know, text, DMs, mentions, you know, emails, calls. Like you would have thought I was the president and Russia just invaded Ukraine or I'm the GM of the Sixers and Ben Simmons refused to play or I'm, you know, Anthony Fauci and COVID broke. I mean, it's insane how many people are trying to get in touch with me or send me this Steph Diggs story. I mean, anytime there is a sex related sports story, the first thing an alarming number of you think of is me. I mean, my God, you know, I I had... So much promise, you know, I did well in school, had plenty of options for careers, and, and, and in the end, who am I? You know, I'm the guy that people think of when Steph Diggs is piping, you know? It's really sick. I, I got a note from Mark Stopa. He said, I, this is Mark speaking, he said, I, a heterosexual, middle-aged male, often think of you, Adam Levitan, when I see stories of kinky sex or threesomes. What does it say about me, about you? For which of us... Is that more disturbing? And my answer to Mark is, yeah, I mean, I, I'm doing jokes out here, guys. You know, I, I got to be honest. I think it's much more disturbing for you, Mark. I really do. Before we go any further on this very professional episode, I have to remind everyone that it is indeed brought to you by Establish the Run NBA. With NFL now in the rearview mirror, I know boredom is setting in for some people. Our NBA team is grinding just as hard on props and DFS as we did in NFL. Head to the NBA subscribe page for details. Props just absolutely ridiculous. They're up almost $12,000 this year if you bet $100 on each prop this season. Just totally insane. All right, enough is enough. Let's get to everyone's favorite portion of the program, the listener questions. Producer Luke. Hit the theme music. All right. Question one from Granola Yoda. He says, is there a point in life when you're not expected to go to all your friends' bachelor parties? My wife is very close to convincing me that once you have the kids, the free pass for getting obliterated with your friends is over. Please tell me she's wrong. Yeah, I mean, she's wrong, Granola Yoda. She's dead wrong. 
this is the exact time that the bachelor party is necessary. I mean, honestly, like when I was young and free, I didn't really get that hyped for bachelor parties, you know? I mean, at, at that point in my life, my, my whole life was a bachelor party, you know? Just do whatever I want, wh whenever I want. And oftentimes what I wanted to do did not include Vegas and strippers and pounding beers, you know? It, it, it's just not me. I didn't really look forward to them. But now, now, Everyone I know is around 40 years old. I spend my time at fucking, you know, Bed Bath & Beyond and kids soccer games in order to leave town for 48 hours. I need a, a full-blown logistics team to sort it out. So you better believe that if there is a chance for a bachelor party now, I am all the way in. Like, I don't give a fuck if it's your third marriage or you don't want to have a bachelor party or whatever. You're fucking having one. And I actually have a friend who's never been married he just turned 40. He's with a woman now. You know, smells like wedding bells to me. You know, he's kind of waffling. I don't know if I want to have a bachelor party. I don't I told him he doesn't have a fucking choice. And, and it's crazy because w when I was 25, I would have been hoping he didn't have a bachelor party. But now, I, I mean, my God, just inject it directly into my cock. It, it reminds me, uh, uh, I know this guy in Denver. He's single. You know, he starts telling me some stories, some single dude stories. But then he's like, you know, I, I don't really feel like talking about it. You know, he's kind of being coy with details. I'm like, buddy, I drive a Honda Pilot. The best restaurant near my house is Panera. I go to fucking dinner parties on the weekend. You're not in the mood for details. You get in the fucking mood, you know? Shout out Costanza, our king. So, so anyways, uh, Granola Yoda, uh, I hope that helps. I'm happy to do an in-home consultation with your wife if you need. Uh, explain to her uh, the situation and, and help her see the light. Question two from Aaron. He says, from the review pods, hopefully you guys all checked those out last week, but he says, from the review pods, it seems like most of the misses were not being high enough on guys like Jonathan Taylor, but where ETR was significantly lower than the market, you were almost always right. Do you think that's meaningful? And should we have more confidence in fades? Or is that just a small sample size? So I, I know what Aaron means here. I, I get it. But I think what people miss from a more macro sense is that the likeliest outcome in the NFL for players is bad, is negative. In other words, it's way easier to say, well, X guy is a bad fantasy pick than Y guy is a good one because there's so many ways for things to go bad for an NFL player. Injuries, you know, personnel additions on your own team, uh, unpredictable usage, you know, your quarterback uh, could get hurt, your quarterback could play poorly, and that could crater the team. I mean, it's just a zillion things can go wrong in the NFL. Just look at the top two rounds from the 2021 fantasy season. You know, Christian McCaffrey got injured. Alvin Kamara was, you know, okay. Derrick Henry got injured. Ezekiel Elliott's dust. Travis Kelsey was meh. Aaron Jones was meh. You know, Saquon was dust. Najee was meh. DeAndre Hopkins was dust. Antonio Gibson had his struggles. Kyle Ridley didn't even play. DK Metcalf was meh. Darren Waller, AJ Brown, CEH, Kittle, McLaurin. Like, you get my point. That at the top, you know, so many things can go wrong, even at the top. So yes, I think if you tracked anyone in the NFL forecasting business, the fades are going to have a way higher hit rate than guys that we are higher than the market on. I uh, hope that makes sense. Question three from Eric. He says, how do you deal with post-NFL season depression? There's an emptiness in my soul without DFS. I hate the NBA, but will likely purchase the ETR package for it just so I can feel something again. I don't think that post-NFL depression is the right word, really. I think maybe boredom is more fair, and certainly I feel some of that. But, you know, when it's the offseason, and particularly this time of the offseason, I really try to be on Team Smell the Roses, you know, do something that makes me sweat every day, you know, some exercise, lift, or pull up Pilates, or, or basketball, or tennis, or ping pong. I actually am actually excited. I signed up for a one-on-one -on -one a stretching session. I know hashtag uh, how rich, but basically I just want someone to like stretch me out my hamstrings, my lower back for like a half hour every day. Um, and also I think just trying to be outside every day. Like I, I know that I've said it before, but one thing I can do in the off season is just like be outside every day. As I've gotten older, it's just so obvious that for me being outside correlates with 
happiness so strongly. And, and that's why, you know, being in Denver now, it's sunny 300 days a year. Like the whole culture of people here is wanting to be active. It's just, it's just good for me in general. Uh, now that said, Eric, um, I know what you're saying, man. There, there's an emptiness in my soul without DFS as well, which is why you're making the right move by signing up for Establish the Run's world-class NBA product. I'm not biased at all, of course. Easy game. Question four from Bad Homie. He says, I saw a lot of lines I liked, so I drove to another state to place some bets. Ended up hanging out with a bunch of drugged out hitchhikers at a rest stop while I placed the bets. How far have you gone to get value? Yeah, I mean, we've all been there, bad homie. I was in Vegas a few years ago. You know, you can't play DFS in Vegas and, and I wanted to play WNBA. So I drove to Prim, which is a town. And I use the term town very loosely, but it's a town on the Nevada, California border. I was literally wandering into the desert on the California side, trying to get the geolocator to pick up that I was in a legal spot. You know, also before Pennsylvania had legal betting, I would drive over the Ben Franklin Bridge in Philly and just stop at the first gas station in Camden. I mean, I was probably like 5% to die there, you know, no big deal. And, and you know, of course, I've played in some shady poker games. Um, I, I'm sure I can say now uh, there was a game uh, when I was at Penn State. This was like 2002, 2003. There was a bar called Mad Max and underneath the bar. Uh, there would be a poker game, you know, the waiters and the bartenders and people would play. It was great. So yeah, man, you know, drugged out hitchhikers at, at the rest stop. Well played. All right. Question five is from friend of the show. Not actually a friend of the show, but his Twitter handle is friend of the show. Uh, anyways, he says, uh, if your club basketball team sucks, have you considered inner tube water polo? Uh, you know, slow your roll there, buddy. You know, take it easy. We We do not suck. I mean, uh, I suck personally. I, I suck bad. But the thing is, after each loss that we suffered earlier in the season, we just kept adding another former Division One player. Like, I'm not exaggerating. We now have a full-blown Division One team out there. We have a dude who played for Yale, one who played for Dartmouth, one who played for Towson, and one who played for South Dakota. And then we have another guy who played uh, D3. And, and you know what? The craziest thing is, even after all these additions, I'm still not even sure that we have the best team in the league. I mean, yeah, you know, we're, we're old as fuck, and, and most teams uh, are a bunch of like 20-something dudes, but still, it's just crazy that in the suburbs of Denver, this league has so many good players. Like, I really would have laid, you know, minus 300, minus 350 that we'd win the league. But, you know, regardless uh, of all that, it, it's enough for me. You know, my game has hit the wall. No inner tube water polo, though. Uh, I'm definitely going to come back next year and play in the 40 and over uh, league. You know, like I need to cross over some geriatric dude uh, to get my confidence back. But yeah, coming soon. Uh, question six from Thomas Fuller. He says, do you plan to play high stakes small field tournaments next year like the Thunderdome? What are your thoughts on these contests? Yeah, I'm not sure yet, Thomas. I'm, I'm not sure. I, I think the Thunderdome is very unique because there are so many people in it playing their cash team or a close version of their cash team in it. So, you know, it kind of creates this massive, massive leverage spot that's really easy to identify. Does that mean that it's easy to win in it? You know, uh, of course not. There's still so much nuance and thought. Um, but generally speaking, yeah, I think the small field, higher stake stuff is best for both my style and like my emotional state, you know? I think the lotteries, you know, AK, the super large field, small buy-in stuff, we have a tiny chance to win. I, I don't think that's really, for me, it's just so much losing, you know, even if you're playing well, you know, you need the absolute stone nuts. It's just hard for me mentally. Um, small field, you know, the, the leverage is bigger on certain fades that you can get and and you can have a couple, you know, kind of just okay or, or even sometimes just average spots in your lineup and still ship the small field stuff. So we'll see. You know, I, I'm not sure I, I want to do the Thunderdome. If I want to enter those streets, I'll have to uh, clear it with noted King of the Dome, Mike Leone, but, but we'll see. Question seven from Cheese Helmet. He says, when are you rolling out the USFL ETR package? XFL DFS was one of the most exhilarating experiences of my life. Uh, well, she's helping. I'm a bit sad for you if XFL DFS was one of the most exhilarating experiences of your life. 
But I will say, those P.J. Walker to Cam Phillips stacks, I mean, if that didn't get you to a full 3.9, you probably need to visit a doctor. Uh, as for the USFL, so I'm not sure exactly what the sites have in mind. You know, are they going to run DFS? How big will the prize pools be? Will they have props listed? You know, I'm not sure on all that. You know, if anyone knows, let me know. Um, so I don't want to make any promises on what we'll have, but uh, we're interested in, and we're watching it for sure. I, I did tweet about some USFL players. You know, it's certainly not great. I wasn't that impressed with Jordan Ta'amu in the XFL. Shea Patterson was the number one overall pick. I, you know, I have questions about him for sure. I, I do like Kyle Sloter, you know, the Sloter house. Shout out team preseason. He's been awesome for the Vikings in preseason. And, and I'm sure that there's some guys that I've never heard of right now that, that will emerge in the USFL, which is always cool. But, you know, the bottom line is that if you're playing American football, if it's on national television, then there will be interest in our country, you know, period. It's just like such a great game to bet on regardless of quality of said game. You know, and I'm sure the quality in the USFL will be very low for reasons I previously described on this podcast, but yeah, it'll still be great to bet on. Question eight from Noso. He says, common dilemma my friends had midseason was the urge to go on dates on Thursday nights, which prevented them from watching their guys on Thursday night football. Many attempted to get the job done and returned to catch the fourth quarter, but few succeeded. What are your thoughts on prioritizing this situation? So if you go to Noso's profile picture on Twitter, he looks like he's in uh, like a fraternity in Michigan or something, you know, like currently in a fraternity in Michigan. And, and I got to say, when, when I was in college, Thursday night was the best night. Like you don't get all the amateurs out there like you do on a Friday or Saturday. You know, you kind of get a smaller but, but better crew typically, uh, I think. And, and so let's say you're in college for four years. Noso, you know, you're on campus for maybe eight months of those each year. So we're talking like, you know, roughly 128 Thursdays in your college career, and you're going to miss one of those. You know, you're going to miss a chance to be on the hashtag team for Jaguars versus Titans on a Thursday night, you know, so you can sweat your season long team. I mean, I don't know, man, like I, I totally get that ripping the bong and watching the game with your boys is great. Uh, believe me, I do. But I, I think you guys got to think long and hard here on a priority basis. All right, question nine. Last question we're going to do today comes from Scott. He says, will you and at a Merle J be doing a podcast together? I think that would be fire. So Scott is referring to Ashley Jennings, formerly known as Ashley Murley. This is uh, Peter Jennings' wife, of course. She's absolutely killing it on Twitter. I've actually thought for a while that a good podcast would be like a woman coaching dudes on how to treat their, you know, girlfriend, wife, lover, whatever. You know, not a podcast for picking up chicks at a bar. You know, not a podcast on Tinder strategy or whatever. And not a podcast with just women. I mean a podcast with men asking women strategy questions. You know, actual strategy for making the person you're with happy, having a happy relationship, whatever. And, and I mean, I... I think that'd be a good podcast. And I think a lot of people agree. I mean, a ton of people have asked me and Ashley to do this podcast. So yes, yes, I'm happy to report that next week it is going down. I will be talking to an actual real live woman about interacting with said women. I mean, what could go wrong? You know, if I don't get canceled in this spot, I mean, it's just a stone cold miracle. Um, I did ask for questions for Ashley on Twitter earlier today. If you have one for her about relationships or really anything, I'll respond there as soon as you can. We're going to tape uh, probably Wednesday. So get your question in as soon as you can. All right. That's going to do it for this edition of the Solo Pod. We'll be back later tonight with Silva to talk about the NFL coaching changes that went down in January and February. So be sure you're subscribed to the podcast, subscribed on YouTube. It's free in both those spots. Don't miss anything. For Bruce Luke, for Evan, I am Adam. Good luck, everybody.